With this shader, we will get into the topic of texture combiners. One thing that you can use in a texture combiner, as the name would suggest, is a texture. So a texture can be brought into the shader using a property, and it's defined slightly differently than a color. Again, we need to have a name for the property, variable name. If you use underscore main text, then that will correspond to the main texture property of the material just how the same way that this underscore color corresponded to the color property so these are great properties to use if you use more texture properties that aren't named main text then you'll just use set texture and get texture instead of dot main texture uh, no big deal it's just a nice shortcut to use alright so we have the name then we have in parentheses the name that shows up in the inspector and the type. The type is not a texture, um, it's a little nice shortcut, 2D, all right, because it's a 2D image. And then you have to define a default, so equal sign. And then inside of these quotation marks, you can put white, gray, black, or bump. I never really have a use for that myself. I just use the shortcut of nothing because if I'm going to put in a property, then I know that I'm going to just drag a texture in there. But if you want to have a default, be my guest and use one of those colors. That's defined on the Shader Lab page called Properties. So there are other, some other options that we can put in some uh, curly braces after that, but I'll get into that in a few moments. So our subshader now similar to the last shader is currently setting everything to the same color so color and the variable of color so we see that over here it's blue and then we're gonna introduce this new thing the texture stage so what we have is the word set texture and then after set texture you're going to put the uh, property that is uh, defined as a 2d up here so let's uncomment that code and save. Then we can update like that. We'll go look at the, what texture we're using. So on this cube, we have a four pixel image. Let's go back to the front. There we go. So now we see it UV mapped with it on the default cube. And by just using that set texture stage, we are overriding what is going on in what is known as the primary stage. Now primary can be one of three things. This is a solid color, defined by color. It can also be vertex colors or vertex lighting, and we'll get into that later. So as I mentioned, this texture is being wrapped in the model based on the UV coordinates. The default cube in Unity does have them. And let's find out what happens when we have a mesh that doesn't have UV coordinates, however. This is something I see a lot on Unity Answers in the forums. Uh, people are not having their texture mapped correctly. It's just a solid color. So if we go and use the same material, combiner, on this, we'll see that the whole mesh, despite using the same shader, the whole mesh is a solid color instead of, a, instead of seemingly a texture, but it actually is using the texture. All the UVs, however, are at the default position of 0, 0 right now and that maps to the lower left portion of the image so because that's green on the image the whole thing shows up as green so if you need UVs make sure that you have them and they get imported into Unity there are some other options uh, other than using UV coordinates for um, wrapping the texture around the model and those are all done through the word text gen and some other keyword uh, in curly braces after the default for the 2D property. So that one of them is text gen object linear. So let's get rid of this uh, no UV cube for a moment. And we'll see that in perspective, it's a bit weird looking on top. It works better in isometric mode you'll see that the texture is being projected orthogonally to the model and that's kind of an interesting effect we also have text gen I linear which is not related to world space anymore but rather um, our viewing direction so you see this texture unwrapped onto the model it looks exactly the same as the texture over here and then it just tiles as necessary so there's isometric view again and in perspective <laughs> 
And finally, this is the last option that I know of on the iPhone, according to the documentation, it's the last option, uh, sphere map. So this can be done uh, to, typically used for reflection mapping. Uh, it's a little odd, it's not as good as a cube map, but can be interesting for shiny looking materials. So let's go back and use UV mapping. That's the last of the text gen that I'll be using in this series. So if we get rid of those curly braces, um, we're going to go back and check out what this looks like in the inspector. Got color, then texture. Well, if we wanted to have texture be on top, we could theoretically just copy and paste that on top. However, that's going to generate an error, and it's not going to render anything uh, because we don't have a working shader right now. We can rectify that by including something in those, or including the braces themselves. We don't actually need anything in there. And by doing so, Unity permits us to put the texture first if we want to. So I generally just leave that off and put the textures later, but if you really want to have the texture properties come first, that's how you'd go about that. Just make sure you have the curly braces. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. You won't get any errors if the textures are all at the bottom. So when we see the words set texture, and then anything afterwards. It's actually a shortcut for writing set texture something and then combine texture. I think that's a little bit nonsensical because you're not actually combining anything and it's clutter, so I'll never use that, but it won't generate an error if you actually write combine texture. You can also use combine primary and that will be the same thing as commenting out the entire set texture line and just seeing solid color generated by color. Um, it also will show you black if you comment out color because the default primary color is black. So if you comment out everything, we'll get the same thing we saw in the original shader from the first tutorial. Okay, but the word combine would suggest that we can actually combine more than one thing, and we certainly can. That, you can see a list of commands on the Shader Lab page called texturing. So we'll see that we have four different operators that can work on two arguments. So the arguments, let's go ahead and get our texture back. Just check this out. Um, so we could use that and then do texture times texture, for example. Now that won't do anything in this case because our uh, values are all zero or one for every component of the color. So we'll put a more interesting color in. So there's 50% for the values that are found therein, red, green, blue, or all of them. So if we were to just comment everything out, we'll get something that's twice as bright. If you have something multiplied by uh, 50%, then it becomes twice as dark. You can also uh, use addition and subtraction. So if you subtract something from itself, of course, you'll get black. Um, and there's also one called assigned add, which adds the two things together and then subtracts 0.5. So in this case, you're adding something that's at 0.5, adding it to itself to get one, and then uh, you're back to the original. So and if you're ever going to just do a combine the texture with itself, you probably could bake that all into uh, the texture without having to use a texture combiner. So I, I don't think I'll ever actually use texture with texture in a, a two op operand combiner. But we can combine the texture with primary. So let's go ahead and multiply that with primary color that's just gray. So I'll go ahead and desaturate. There's white. And then we can take the uh, value of that down to darken up the texture. And when you use combine a texture times primary, that's going to be the same exact thing as using only emissive light. So we, we're not uh, getting into light yet. But when we do, and we have the emissive em emission property, and that's just going to be a solid color for the entire mesh, and when you multiply the light in, which is how you do lighting, uh, you'll get the same results as multiplying by a solid color uh, from the primary stage as defined by color alone. Uh, so there's no reason to really just use emission by itself. This is also similar to using ambient light, but in the case of ambient light, you can affect the uh, light color with the render settings. So that's a little bit more complicated, but still multiplying by a solid color. 